Making this phone show a Sony Ericsson special, the company has announced two refreshed devices, the Xperia Mini and the Xperia Mini Pro, similar to the X10 versions last year. Both share the new Bravia display enhancements, have three inch screens with half VGA resolution, plus Android 2.3 Snapdragon processors, five megapixel cameras and 720p HD video capture, plus the other usual specs. Obviously, as shown here, the Mini Pro has a slide out QWERTY keyboard. The non-Pro version doesn't. The Sony Ericsson Xperia Arc is notable in an otherwise fairly boring world of Android touchscreen slabs for a number of reasons. Number one, it's incredibly thin and light, 113 grams, despite having this enormous 4.2 inch screen. When you pick it up, you think someone's forgotten to put the battery in and then you realize it's working <laughs> with a 1500 milliamp hour removable battery inside. Number two, it's curvy. Almost every single line here in the form factor is curved. In theory, this helps it fit the phone into your hand and I've, I've no complaints here, so it must be working. Number three, the display pixels have been stretched ever so slightly and the 854 by 480 pixel resolution has been packaged to be subtly widescreen, 16.9 as per the raw resolution, with the Xperia Arc being and feeling narrower in the hand and for example, the, the four inch screen Galaxy S which along with the lightweight makes the phone a lot more accessible to the general public, despite what the specs may suggest. Number four, Sony Ericsson's bothered to put in a pretty decent camera in the phone, but more of that later. So far, so good then, but the Arc does have one potential downside too. It's more or less all plastic and it feels it. Every time you pick up the phone, your fingers will register warm, ever so slightly squidgy plastic. I'm definitely not a fan of Sony Ericsson's mock chrome plastic edgings. In addition, the construction shows up in lack of rigidity. You can uh, twist the phone fairly easily like this. <laughs> it's not a huge problem, but it's also not inspiring much confidence. I guess that's the price you pay for a large screen smartphone at 113 grams. Rather odd the button and port placings here. Because of the, uh, the curved styled back, the Arc's exterior features are all crammed into corners. The shutter button here is microscopic. Ditto the volume rocker up here. And the 3.5 mil jack and the micro USB ports are right at the top of each side, which uh, Julie will mention in a moment in a guest reviewer spot. The display is transflected like the X10s, which means that it's usable in sunny conditions, yay. Though again, Julie and I both got a beef with the brightness levels, as you'll see. Photo and video display here are enhanced in software with Sony's mobile Bravia engine, which basically pumps up saturation, contrast and noise reduction to make things look better. The end result is super for watching movies and Android 2.3 under the hood means that just about everything plays too. The single mono speaker is loud, but uh, rather tinny here and suffers from the, uh, the same everything through a tiny rear facing slot as the Nokia N8 like this, possibly a problem. The Sony Ericsson layer on top of Android has been made easier to sidestep, thankfully. Timescape is just as useless for power users as ever. Anything more than no reading tweets involves spawning out to Twitter's mobile site and any attempt to enter data has to be done in portrait mode only, which is highly frustrating. Luckily, you can just delete Timescape and use the other widgets of your choice. It's Android. The application lists of pages, iPhone style, initially a Sony Ericsson C Fit, but you can sort by most recently installed or alphabetical if you like, or even enter here as an iPhone copying jiggle mode to move icons where you want them. As part of this review, I've asked Android power user Julie Wills, who runs the phone show chat forum, to use this arc for a week as her one and only device. Here's her report. I'm not convinced I actually like it to hold, it's just a little bit angular, um, but it's got a nice crisp screen compared with my Nexus one. Although there is a sort of a slight, if you look very closely, slight hourglassing uh, of the display compared with uh, the Nexus one, but it is much brighter and crisper. The display sort of dims after a while on the timer, but you all you can do is set it to a, a specific brightness. Um, it has three physical keys along the bottom, and these are nice keys. They're um, not horrible sort of clicky things like you've got on the San Francisco. And I really like these keys, um, much nicer to, to use and they're not sort of nasty noisy ones as well. You can unlock it by using either the home key or the power key at the top and then you've got the usual slide to unlock. Um, you use the slide to unlock even if you've got a lock pattern as well or, or a pin um, rather than just 
uh, going yeah. straight to that. And one of my uh, bugbears is that the USB and charging key is on the side rather than the bottom. I'm a great fan of Brodit powered car mounts and you can't just sort of slot it into your mount or a desk charger or anything like that. And it has to be said that with the cables plugged in, it does rather look like a weird beast with ears because the, <laughs> the headphone socket is on the opposite side. So you get cables coming out of both sides, which is a little odd, but not terribly elegant. Yeah, I've covered the basics already in my review. What highlights or problems have you found? Um, I was interested to see that it comes with iPlayer pre-installed. Um, not that I use iPlayer a lot, but it seemed an interesting choice of things. Um, there's also Sony's own uh, data traffic widget, which I never actually used, but I assume it's very much like APM Droid yeah. uh, for switching the, the 3G data on and off. Um, when I first switched it on, I'd had a few things. Uh, I, I'd had my Nexus switched off for a little while, and I had a stack of text messages waiting to come in. And the stack of text messages on the home screen drove me absolutely mad within minutes. So I have to say I replaced that yeah. with my favorite uh, text messaging application pretty much straight away. Um, and I'm not a great fan of the default user interface. I did stick with it for a, a little while just to see what it was like. Um, but then I just wanted to go over to Launcher Pro and get it all set up the way I wanted to. Um, having said that, most of what they've done is just extra widgets and what have you, but they have made a complete hash, in my opinion, of the contacts. Uh, it's an absolute triumph of form over faction. Somebody's, <laughs> somebody's gone mad in the, uh, in the uh, user interface department. The uh, actions that you want to do are overlaid on either this outline silhouette or uh, a photograph. And with a real photo, presumably. And a with lot, a real photo, it's even worse. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Um, so all the things that you might want to do, sending a message, editing, and we can't even read. Oh, Mark as a favourite is that one in the middle. <laughs> and you can't even see it on that yeah. outline. So um, yeah, nice idea, guys. But let's try and make something a bit more practical next time. Um, there were a few places where it was a bit laggy, um, particularly just making phone calls or in contacts themselves. Uh, making phone calls, you quite often get a message coming up saying connecting before it actually even dialed the number. But the real biggie is that I couldn't get any connection to Wi-Fi on any router that I had access to. My one at home and the one at my parents' house both connected to the Wi-Fi, dropped the connection immediately, connected to the Wi-Fi, dropped the connection immediately. I've seen a lot of other people having problems with it in forums. Um, the workarounds that I've seen suggested didn't work for me, so that would be a complete take it back to the shop, I'm afraid, for me. Thanks, Julie. Interestingly, the ARC was rock solid on my Wi-Fi, but these reports are a bit worrying. There's 320 megabytes of internal flash storage in the ARC, which is disappointing, even given that many apps can now be installed on micro SD. An eight gigabyte card ships with the ARC. After all, you don't want to lose your apps every time you mount your ARC and its card on your desktop or laptop computer to transfer files. Uh, and we've been used to Android flagships coming with a lot more memory inside than this. Sony Ericsson make a big thing of the ARC's camera. They champion its low-light optimised Exmor R sensor. But this is smoke and mirrors. <laughs> I've done extensive testing in a variety of use cases and light conditions, and the ARC gets nowhere near my 2010 Nokia N8 that's being used to shoot this show, of course. In fact, in bright conditions, it's blown out and worse than contemporaries like the LG Optimus 2X, which I looked at a few phone shows ago. But look, it's all relative. At one end of the scale, you have HTC's budget camera units and their phones, absolutely hopeless. At the other end, you have the Nokia N8, uh, and then right in the middle, you have some devices which would be good enough for most casual smartphone snappers, the iPhone 4, the Samsung Galaxy series, the Optimus 2X, the, the 7 Mozart, and this, the Xperia Arc. Just don't expect miracles from it. The video is likewise, decent casual capture with the advantage of continuous autofocus, and the disadvantage of the same low light optimized sensor, which ensures that bright areas of footage are over whitened and are slightly unpleasant. And this is a test with continuous autofocus of video capture on the Sony Ericsson Xperia Arc 720p. This is in fairly bright uh, spring sunshine here in the UK. Let's look at audio capture and at video quality. Battery life on the Arc isn't great. Sony Ericsson even put up a special official self help page with tips on extending battery use. And that's not a good sign. Yes, you can swap out the battery, but partly because of the mobile Bravia thing and partly because of a camera bug and partly because you have to keep the backlight on more or less full brightness if you want it to look good. Uh, this arc swallows up even more power than other Android handsets. Expect a day's moderate use at most. In addition to the glitches Julie noticed, 
Uh, others have noticed that call handling and GPS functions are rather buggy on the ARC's launch firmware. But this device will do well in the shops, I predict. The curvy form factor stands out from the crowd and uh, women in particular will be drawn to it. My wife gave it her seal of approval after months of rectangular heavy slabs being shown to her by me. Buy this for the styling, buy it for the generally good display, buy it for the full gingerbread experience, even buy it for Sony Ericsson's tweaks here and there once they've ironed out the bugs. Just don't buy it thinking you're getting an Android powered equivalent to the likes of Nokia's N8 camera powerhouse because you won't. A qualified thumbs up though, overall.